Hey y'all, welcome back to our channel. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the murder of Missy Beavers. She was a 45-year-old mother who was a very avid fitness instructor, and she was murdered by an unknown assailant in 2016. So Terry Missy Beavers, most called her Missy, uh, was born August 9th, 1970, and she was born and raised in Texas. Uh, she's married to Brandon Beavers, and they have three daughters, Allie, Sarah, and Hannah, and they live in Red Oak, Texas, which is a small like bedroom community in the suburbs of Dallas. Now, Missy had had her business degree from uh, college, uh, but when she started having kids, she recognized that she would rather stay at home with them than to, you know, go out in the workforce and pay for child care. So after her first daughter was born, I think she decided to get into fitness. Um, and then when her um, youngest daughter was like two years old or whatever, she started in Camp Gladiator. And uh, this was a fitness program, I think, out of Austin, Texas, where it's just like individualized workout routines and there's people sporadically through the state of Texas that teach these programs and you know they're in uh, parking lots in churches um, just wherever now Missy had a huge following uh, I mean huge because you had to get up at 5 a.m. to go to her fitness class and that is dedication so um, <laughs> I wouldn't get up that early to go to fitness class sorry I don't even go to fitness class and I don't get up that early um, anyway, so she was a very good instructor. She was very motivational. She she really cared about people and about you know well being and weight loss because she had a transformation. I think she lost like forty some pounds. You got to think after having three, she she had three kids, and after yeah. the third kid is when I think she really got going into it. I mean, most women have a huge setback after having kids like that. Yeah. So. She really wanted to motivate others around her. Her husband said that, you know, at her funeral, there were like people that he had no idea that she had reached that many people in the community. So the night of April 17th, Missy was preparing for her morning class on April 18th. Um, she saw the forecast and that was raining. So instead of um, doing their class in the parking lot, she has a church that she also has a space inside just in case. So she posted on her Facebook, um, even though it's raining, we're still training. So they had planned to meet around 445 in the morning uh, at this Creekside Church in Midlothian, Texas. Now, her drive from Red Oak to Midlothian was about 15, 20 minutes or so. And she liked to get there early so she could set up her mat, set up the mic. And um, she did have these people who did an early bird class every once in a while. Um, there were normally two women who attended at 4.30 in the morning, um, and then the normal attendees would come in at 5, and they would finish out their class. Um, now, Missy had let these two early bird women know that there was a gentleman coming uh, to add to the early bird group. He had never been at Missy's class before. Um, I think the time frame was a little off for him, so he asked if he could attend the early bird session. Uh, obviously that was okay with Missy's. The morning of April 18th, Missy arrives at the church at 416 in the morning. She's unpacking all her things. She puts her keys on the tailgate and enters through the main entrance of the church. Shortly after Missy entered the church, uh, the first camper arrived and that was the early bird gentleman. Uh, we don't have his name, but he was the first camper. He came in at 435. Um, and I guess there's some sort of weird lock mechanism. On... I remember this was the first time that he's been to this class. Right. So there's like a weird lock mechanism on the outside of the church that all the campers knew but him because he hadn't been there. So he kind of waited outside under the awning until the other campers arrived around 455 or so. Um, they enter into the church and they're heading through the main corridor of the church to go to their normally assigned room and they find the lifeless body of Missy Beavers laying on the ground with blood everywhere and glass um, over her body. And from that point, I believe the first calls that went out 
yeah. at five o'clock. I think five a.m. is when they called nine one one, and then they responded. And I think they were there around like five ten, is what the outline says. So EMS arrives around five ten with the police, and uh, they determine that Missy uh, is no longer with us. Um, that she was brutally murdered, and they had said puncture wounds in her chest and in her, in her, head. her head. And we're going to discuss a little snippet of information we were able to find. Um, a lot of people say puncture wounds are like stab wounds, or um, which we'll talk about the intruder was carrying like a hammer or mallet. Um, and a lot of people assume that that was the weapon used to murder Missy. But like I said, we have a little snippet of information we're going to add in later. Um, there was also defensive wounds on her, yeah. too. So she definitely put up a fight, right. which you'd expect a woman who is physically fit, obviously yeah. taken uh, unaware. She's going to put up a fight. Um, but yes, there was multiple different types of wounds. Yeah. So EMS and police, you know, go over the crime scene. They have crime scene analysts coming all through and they notice the church has been vandalized. There's windows in the kitchen broken out and the back door, there's glass on it. And they kind of broke that and reached around and unlocked themselves. So they said that was the point of entry, uh, which they assume. There was even some high windows that they said were some broken yeah. too. So the theory with that was, we heard a few things. Um, was this intruder trying to see if there was an alarm or if police would respond, like there wasn't an alarm when he broke in the church. Was he trying to just break out windows to see if something would trigger an alarm? That would make sense. Yeah. I mean, it's a smart move. So obviously no one responded to the glass breaking. Um, and the intruder, when they were looking at the tapes, um, everywhere they said that the outside cameras of the church were not working. Now, we don't know if that's just information held by the police and they're not releasing that to the media. Uh, the police have been very, very quiet uh, in this case. Mm -hmm. They've only let out information that is absolutely imperative because once they catch this killer, they need... Certain details yes. refrained from the public so that only the killer would, would know, know that. that. Okay, so let's... There's a bug there. Um, <laughs> so we got flying mosquitoes in here. Um, so they review the tapes and it is weird. It's a weird video. It is a very weird video. And the police right off the bat were like, oh, we got this guy. Uh, we have him on tape. We, you know, we can pick out who it is really easily. And, you know, this happened in 2016 and it's 2020 and we still don't know who killed Missy Beavers. So this footage is really odd. So we're going to kind of, we're going to go through it with you guys. We're going to play it and then just kind of talk through it and uh, give us your feedback, what you think. I mean, there's been a lot of things said about this guy's walk and, and who, if it's a female yeah, or Yeah, I mean, there's some male. really weird things. Like they don't even know if they think it's a male or a female. Right. And you'll see the person is heavily covered. Yes. And they, they do that. And um, Brandon... Uh, Beaver is the husband of Missy said he doesn't think because you'll see in the video It looks like he's trying to play off like he's a police officer, right? He right. has like police gear and he said no you can see in the video That it looks like it's like makeshift like those are just yeah. different Hodge, kinds of pants Yeah, yeah, so and the way they walk like if I had that much gear on me, I probably would have a different gait um, but did they wear, wear bigger shoes to make, you know, throw off the police? I, I think mean, they may have stuffed the shirt or whatever right. to, to make it look like a different body type. Yeah. So we're going to go through this video and then uh, give us your feedback and let us know what you think as well. Okay, right there, that person is a lot bigger. Yeah, it, it does look like they're carrying, you could see him carrying something. It, see, he couldn't get in there, so he was kind of... Yeah, so a lot of people say it's like he didn't know, or he or she didn't know. Their way around, that they were just kind of, you know, right meandering. Here, actually, right here, it's like they're trying to pry the door open. And it looks like it's a hammer, like the back of a hammer trying to pry it open. But they're unsuccessful. I guess they... He's like, screw that door. <laughs> but pay attention to the walk, because the walk was a big thing. No, it's it's the other yeah, yeah, yeah. one. It shows it better. It's still like, just weird meandering. 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 Like, 
Here, yeah. look at the right foot. It like yeah, it goes towards way out. outward like a duck. And then that's probably the nursery because in our church, you you know, the parents can peek in, but the but, door. Yeah, the two double doesn't so even know it's a two double door. in for a second. It's like they're looking for something. Like they are looking for something, but they don't know what or where it is. I, I don't know. I mean, a lot of people, there's speculation saying that this person, she was caught you know, but the what, wrong we, place, wrong time, but she there was over, nothing stolen. They didn't she, find anything stolen from it though. She had a lot of wounds on her body. And normally that means crime of passion. Exactly. It's just weird going in and out of areas. And like he drags his hand on the wall. It's like the conjuring. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Look at, but like look, he's beating ran, something. And then, yeah, that was another thing. He's randomly going around just hitting stuff with a hammer and not very forcefully. Just kind of like. Just, Maybe it's a chick then. That's what they're saying. They're saying some of the walk, the tendencies, the strutting, like how they're how they were strutting, um, is similar to how a stride of a of a woman oh, would be. Yeah, I, it's just a really odd video. And police released that like hours after uh, Missy was found murdered. And you know, watching that, I kind of walk outwards like a duck. So I don't know. Yeah, but I have I do that somewhat too. I don't know. And they were saying maybe someone had a foot injury. And, you know, after investigating all this, they found like a jealous wife or something that had recently had a foot injury. Um, we're going to go over people of interest uh, at the end here. But something else that correlates with this, though, is the parking lot. Oh, yeah. So like a couple hours before this happened. There was, and I think this tied in because like what Ashley said about the, someone may have tried to throw something or like a rock or something to break a window, a high window to see if police would come up. There's a, there's another video. So the outside of the, the church cameras were not working, but there is an they outdoors. They looked at bi businesses uh, to see if by. they had footage. And there's like an outdoor, um, like an outdoorsy where they sell guns, ammo, uh, sports gear, fishing gear. Um, that's like half mile down the road. And I think the, it was like 3.30. The road that this is on, I, I found it interesting, was like it's a main uh, thorough through. So it's like a big freeway. There's a lot of truckers, um, a lot of people traveling this road. So they go down to this sports you know, complex. And at 3.30 in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, there was a vehicle that drove, like turned in, Into the parking turned lot. their lights off, kind of meandered in well here Tur here let's put that on yeah <laughs> might as well so, so uh, it's just really odd footage as well like who would be driving around in a parking lot at 3 3 30 in the morning turning their lights on turning it off parking sitting for five minutes driving around again so the cops tried to zoom in on the license plate but obviously um, surveillance footage is very grainy. It's not anything that has high definition. So they were unable to make out the plates. Um, but this vehicle is also weird. Like it goes hand in hand. Was this like a lookout vehicle? They were trying to see if, you know, police would respond or whatnot. So I think we're going to get that too. So I guess we're going to go over this too. <laughs> see, this is the car it pulls into this parking lot. So before this, it, it well, like see. pulled in. And turned off its lights, and then they parked under a street lamp. But you can just see, like, hold on, let's get to it. You can just see it's just it's just very odd the way. Here, hold on. Like, the look how it's just going through the parking lot with the lights. The off. lights off, and then they hit their brakes, and then they turn their lights back off and hit their brakes off and on. And, and they're off. flashing. So this goes on for a few minutes, and you can't make out because of the the low light like that. You can't make out the plate. It looks like, a, I think they said Nissan Sentra. Altima. One of those two. I thought it was Altima. I think they're pretty much the same car. Yeah. And it was a light-colored uh, Nissan four-door. But, yeah, I mean, you can't, like, you can see the car in different spots. You can't see who the person is inside. Right. I think I had looked up um, part of the video. I was able to zoom in, try to, try to like, like, uh, like a higher-quality photo of that person in it. Now, the weird part to me is the person in it, I think, was wearing all black because you can literally see the seat as like an, a beige, white interior seat. You can see the seat, but you can't see the person. Right. And the person in the video in the church is in all black. 
And I exactly. think I think it makes sense of what Ashley said. Yeah, I think these were tied in. Um, and I think whether it was, it was the same person or whether it was two different people, I mean, I think one goes in hand with the other. I mean, two weird things happening on a random night in a small, you know, Texas town. Uh, nah. And it was close enough to the church that they could have definitely done, you know, see if the cops would arrive, go over there and hang out and wait to see if they would see cop cars arrive, but when it didn't happen, I, um, I'm sure they assumed it was good to go back over to the church. So as you all know, in crimes like this, um, they look at the family first. So first of all, they looked at the husband. Always the husband. It is always the husband. In this case, it's not, though, unless he did something real sneaky. Really sneaky. So um, they looked at him, and he, he did this yearly fishing trip. Um, I don't know who it was with, whether it was with family. with this company. With his company, okay. Um, and he was gone. And, you know, there was no way. His cell phone, uh, emails, uh, people were with him. And there was no way that it was Brandon. He was and, a solid alibi. Right. But then they also looked, you know, was it murder for hire? Did he hire somebody to murder Missy? Um, because there had been talks that they um, had some infidelity issues, whether it was Missy or Brandon or both. Um, they checked at his bank accounts and looked through his finances. And they're continually doing that, even to this day. Um, he has not paid a large sum to anybody. He hasn't, you know, switched around his money in bank accounts. So there's nothing suspicious going on with Brandon. Uh, he's just a grieving husband. And a lot of people will say on his interview, he was very cold and um, <clears throat> non-emotional. But you know what? Everybody is different, reacts differently to loss like that. And but you don't know, he could have been in shock, you know, and he's just you know, trying to process it. So I, I don't... I, I saw, but I saw emotion in that. I, I saw emotion in a different way. People that internalize a lot of stuff, you can still see it through them. Also, he's got to try to keep it strong because he has three girls that he's right. got to take care of and, and that are, you know, missing their mom. And he's got to do his best to keep everything together too. Right. So the next person they look to um, is Randy, um, Missy's father-in-law, which is Brandon's father. Now, something was really weird, and he did it. It's kind of off color, but he was staying um, for the um, funeral, excuse me. Uh, he was staying with some relatives, and these relatives had a larger dog, and him and his wife had this little chihuahua. So these dogs got in a fight. Supposedly, you know, he rescued his little chihuahua and brought it to the emergency vet, um, him and his wife. And two days after the murder, two or three days, I'm not, I don't know for sure. Um, he brought this bloody ass shirt, a white, it was a white women's XL bloody ass shirt to the dry cleaner. So the dry cleaner's like, what in the hell? Because they, it's a small town. They know who Missy is. They know right. what's going on. They're like, oh my God. Why is this man doing this? And the dry cleaner said it looked like they tried to wash the shirt. Um, so the dry cleaner calls the police and says, hey, listen, you know, something doesn't seem right here. The, they the have a father in law of this dead person to show up with a bloody shirt. Right. So right, right off the bat, Randy and Brandon go to the police department. They're like, we need to nip this in the butt. There was also a news article, a news clip that is uh, widely um, shown that they were like, it's a non-issue. You know, they told the story of the dog and, you know, they did do DNA of the shirt and it was animal blood. So, and they had, they took the dog to the vet, right? The, the dog passed away, but they, I mean, they even have reported at the vet. Right. That this came the in for that clarified. reason. Yeah, exactly. So the reason why they say Randy is because Randy is very, very close with his son, Brandon. And supposedly Brandon was hurt by Missy's infidelity. And I think Randy was supposedly sticking up for Brandon. And that's why he would have been a person of interest. And they have a similar walk. So right. the person in the video and, and Randy. Yes, that's weird. Can you get the video? Who called in the tip, please buy the police work that it triggered. They are reaching out far and wide 
that they've cast a huge net on this deal. Brandon and his father, Randy Beavers, addressed reporters shortly after the release of a warrant affidavit. Public record that shows police are running DNA tests now on bloody clothing dropped off at a Midlothian dry cleaners. Randy Beavers explaining the blood was from a dog fight in which his wife's chihuahua was killed. Backed up by a Facebook posting his wife made on April 22nd, four days after the murder of 45-year-old Terry Missy Beavers. The dry cleaner receipt shows about four and a half hours later, Randy dropped off the bloody items. It's just a sign that people are being uh, diligent about the situation. And That's another thing. People were not, they were not upset that dry cleaners did that. They were happy about it because it meant people were trying and actively trying to help search for the killer for Missy. Right. And uh, responding to the police with it. And that's, we want that. We so want that to continue. By them doing this, it tells me that they're being diligent and doing their job on, on any, any tiny little whatever comes across is being looked at. And it should be. This just the latest twist in the unsolved murder of Missy Beavers. Struck in the head and killed April 18th. Okay, so after a little bit of searching, I think we found the, the correct one here. Um, so look at the um, look at the walk when Randy uh, comes in. You can kind of see it has that same kind of wobble to it, and his his right leg does seem to flank out a bit. All over white. Now Randy Beaver, as well as his son, just uh, has been in Even the police the it has station the same nearby. Body. He has the same size. Look on. Right now, according to detectives, Randy Beavers took four shirts to the dry cleaner. Three shirts. Described as men's shirts, one double XL shirt. See, it's, it's with very, it's stains. very similar. Like it's not exact, but it's it's very similar. It is, and it's eerily weird. But he was ruled out because um, him and for, his wife were out in California. I know, but they're not even from Red Oak or Midlothian. They live farther away, like forty-five minutes away from them. So they weren't even in town. They were in California with a group of people, and there were like pictures verifying that. You know, they were there, their cell phone showed that they were there. So there is something weird about that walk and how it's so similar to that of the intruder. Which the only other thing that I could think of is maybe whoever, if it was a faked walk and a faked... Maybe they were trying to intimidate. Well, they're trying, they trying to make it look like it was the family right. and divert other you know investigation purposes mm, that makes sense too i mean that was the only thing i could think of right because otherwise why why go through all that trouble unless you're i mean that's that's a pretty exact figure and exact way of walking so right. try to throw them off if you're someone that's not that way making yourself seem that way would very much throw them off of your trail personally right so after ruling out randy and brandon uh they had to look at her internet you know um data and she was very very active on the internet she made a lot of posts on facebook um she had a lot of um platforms downloaded on her phone if someone wanted to find her then they could yeah right? she, she was very very active on facebook like everyone knew where she was at that given moment um so there was a linkedin account that they looked at and supposedly a few days before her murder, she received, received this like bizarre, weird message. I don't know what it says or who it was from. They've never released that. But her friend came to the police and said, hey, a few days before, Missy said she received this weird email. Um, and, you know, they never looked into it because Missy didn't obviously think anything was going to happen to her. But, I mean, that person, I guess, has been ruled out. And, you know, it didn't go any farther. They didn't even release the name uh, to the public. So this case is still, you know, being looked at, investigated. Um, who else? Well, there? they had, they had, so going back to the infidelity thing, um, she did have some people that she used LinkedIn, actually LinkedIn as like, she was flirting with them back and, back, back and forth messages which is weird. So they seized her phones. They seized like her computers and stuff to check that. Um, so they had tried thinking that there may be like a jealous husband or a jealous wife, right. something like that. Cause she was in good shape and she, I mean, she knew it. <laughs> um, and it, uh, they went through their, you know, they never really released anything. They never had someone that will say is uh, a suspect. They only had people of interest and all the people of interest have been kind of brushed out. 
as far as being uh, potential people that, that really committed the crime. Um, in saying that, though, that just goes to show that there is even the small little town, there is not much information out there about who would want to hurt her, who would want to kill her. They, no one has any reasonings or understandings why, unless there's like some weird stalker that just was obsessed with her and, and decided that this was their way of going about it. So I'm reading right here that it said, um, I knew I was looking, Bobby Wayne Henry was also a suspect. Mm -hmm. um, and it said in the fall of 2019, uh, the police received a tip um, that Bobby Wayne Henry had been a tactical officer, um, that he still had his riot gear, but it didn't fit him anymore. Um, he was a licensed security guard, and he also worked Missy's funeral. That's true. So that was kind of weird. Um, but, you know, he, Again, wasn't, he was an off, he was a weird character. You know, I, we watched one of these yeah, things that, about his past and how he was a liar and very, very manipulative, um, had some sexual assault cases Yeah, the on sexual him. assault was weird, but I don't think Missy, at least they didn't, they didn't disclose it, I don't think Missy was sexually assaulted. No, they didn't say anything about that, that was kept quiet. Um, but this guy's six one. They said the killer, the intruder, was five two to five seven. So this rules him out. I mean it's not like he could duck over. I mean you could definitely tell if someone was slumping. That'd be a that'd be a huge crowd. So you know this Bobby Wayne Henry was looked into and like very, very intensively. Um and you know obviously he didn't do it. He's too tall and I guess they ruled out other um, sources. And well, and they, they got the height based off of the, the door frames inside of the church where they were walking. Um, and, and someone else, I, I can't remember where I read it, but they, they made a good point is they, they live in Texas, right? Texas is definitely a very, uh, gun friendly state. Um, I do believe Missy and her family had their concealed permits and she regularly carried at least in her vehicle. If she had thought that there'd be any inkling of an idea that she could be under attack, why, leave it in the truck. So this is right. definitely something unexpected. I, I don't think anyone... Her husband said she was very trusting. I mean, he said he, he was worried about her numerous times getting up when it was dark to go prepare for these classes all by herself. So like Harrison said, he, he said you need to carry a weapon. So, I mean, she had it in her truck, but it didn't help her at all. And we definitely think that this is not, as again, there was no wrong place, wrong time. There was nothing stolen. We believe that she was right targeted. Right after that, I think they were thinking that just because, you know, it was Monday morning. And there was no other reason to hurt her. It was Monday morning. The church, you know, got all their money on Sunday, you know, mm -hmm. and this wasn't a big mega church. It was like a small little hometown church. Um, but I'm sure they probably still got an offering on Sunday. So Monday morning would be like the most prime time to break into a church but there was nothing missing you know uh there was vandalism done but nothing was stolen so why else would someone be meandering through the hall like a weirdo um and she was killed right when she came in like yeah. literally and we're going to show that layout of the church um her body is right at the front doors and, and also like that's a huge escalation for someone who is meandering, doesn't know where they're going inside the church, mm -hmm. looking for something possibly to go from that to possibly stealing something to killing someone brutally. Right. That's a huge so, escalation. This is where the little tidbit of information comes from. So I did some digging, digging at murderdata.com. And if y'all don't know what that is, you go on it. It's really cool. It's kind of weird to figure out at first. You got to put in the criteria on the right hand side and then click the bar columns to kind of see. Like red is solved and gray is unsolved. And you can actually look at um, the crime in your county, your hometown. It is really, really weird to look at. But the Midlothian uh, police actually, um, I'm going to put the picture up here. It says 2016 solved. No, Midlothian, circumstance undetermined. And it says white female, 45 years of age, handgun, pistol, revolver, etc. Mm -hmm. Now it says that is the weapon. So these are unsolved. So unsolved crimes have to be stored in a bank. And that's what this website is so that, you know, you can keep track of them. It's data, you know, for 
everybody to see it's public knowledge. So why would there be record, you know, in 2016 from Midlothian, a white female, and there were no murders in Midlothian for like seven years or eight years prior to this. So there were no other murders in 2016 in Midlothian of a 45 year old female. So this makes me think that she was shot. Why are the cops holding that? And I think it's also weird because you definitely see the, the person wielding a hammer or a mallet or something like that. So they must have had a gun hiding somewhere. And, you know, it, 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 it's weird to me because she had wounds, I think, that were from being beaten by a hammer or something as well. But there was also shots. And in this report, it says the cause of death was gunshot. Right. And in the other reports we looked at, I'm like, oh, maybe they're just saying it could have been gunshot, um, revolver, pistol, whatever. And no, it's very specific. It says, you know, 45 year old Midlothian knife wounds or, um, you know, it, it says it gives the a description cause, of yeah. what the cause of death was. Yeah. So I was like, oh my God, that's crazy information. And you know, a lot of stuff doesn't make sense to me. I still have a hard time understanding the timeline. Um, between her getting there, the ha that person killing him, and then the first couple of people showing up in the morning, there's not that much time, and no one saw Anyone the person leaving. leaving. Even if they went out the back, you'd think that you would see something, unless you know they had another car get away or something like that. Um, but it's just all really bizarre, and then it's been four years, and they still have nothing, yeah. right? A almost five years, we're getting ready to come into a... Yeah, it's on my birthday. My birthday is April 18th. It is, yeah. So, it sucks. Yeah, I saw this. I was like, no freaking way. I didn't know. So, yeah. Um, so, we're just going to say we covered this case because it was interesting to us. And we are kind of more brief than maybe some other YouTubers. We just like to tell the story, um, give our opinion, and just get feedback from you guys. Um, again, we did not cover every single person of interest in this. We were not planning on it. We don't do that kind of stuff. We just do yeah. a case overview. And since they're ruled out, I mean, since they're not actual suspects, right. we don't really want to dive into other people's lives like that and right. say anything that's negative about them when it's just all hearsay at this point. To us, we don't really know. Right. So we just give basically our opinion and, you know, how we feel about the case after looking at the evidence we have looked at. And of course, there's always more evidence out there. So we know you guys do your homework and you guys come after us sometimes. So be nice. Or come after us, it's fine. We'll kill you in the comments. <laughs> Thank you guys Thank for you. watching again. And we would like some suggestions because we're kind of like, do we do another famous person? Do we do a little small time, a small town home crime? So just let us know what you think and uh, like and subscribe. Thank you.